Thank you for joining me in this video about being intentional, the series of videos named after my book by the same name, which give you tips and hacks on how to make your life be more stable, more productive, more fulfilling, and overall more satisfying. It's no secret that the video content which I have been creating over the last few months is a direct result of messages and emails which you send me, which then are sort of um, merged together under specific themes which I address through these videos. I haven't been making a lot of content over the last few weeks, primarily because the messages which have been coming in have been of the same sort of um, problem or issue, which made me wait to see if it was something which was emerging across the entire base of my audience, or if it was something very specific coming in from a segment of the audience, a segment of you, basically, which were feeling a particular level of anxiety and responding faster than anybody else. As it turns out, the majority of the emails and uh, Twitter messages that have come in over the period of the last three weeks have been about the same subject, more or less, and that is pandemic anxiety. Now, we're in the middle of a pandemic still, unfortunately, so no surprise there. However, the fact that we are experiencing sufficient levels of anxiety to actually respond to a YouTube video is indicative um, in itself of the degree that we are experiencing this and how it is affecting us. So, let's start on this. First of all, I totally appreciate what you're going through. I'm going through the same things myself. We're all in this together, believe it or not. We're all feeling the uncertainty that is um, around us. We're all feeling ambiguity in our decision-making process. We all feel that there are imminent threats coming towards us in the future ahead, and we can't even begin to describe them. None of this is good for our health. None of this is good for our peace of mind. And high functioning as we tend to be most of the time, what we do is we sort of bury this at the back of our head and carry on with our day. The caveat to this is that we do this until we can't. And when we can't, we stop functioning. So essentially, we kind of break down. This is clearly not a good situation to be in, and this is what I'm going to address here. Now, essentially, um, I'm going to give you four basic steps which you can carry out in your life. And these will help you deal better with the level of anxiety which you're feeling, with the level of uncertainty which you're experiencing, and the level of ambiguity which you sense in um, the decisions that you make. Now, I can't be entirely prescriptive here, because each of you, like me, is relatively unique in the context of our lives, in the context of our situation, personal situation, in the context of our professional situation, and how we sort of synthesize all this in order to deal with what we are experiencing. However, I will give you four steps that will guide you through the process and make it better for you. So here we go. Step number one, acknowledge the problem. Now this is obvious, we tend to sort of deal with problems which we feel have no immediate solution by burying them inside us, putting them at the very back of our mind. But that still requires cognitive effort in order to happen. It still detracts from the available mental bandwidth we have in order to carry on with our lives. So essentially, by acknowledging the problem, by clearly articulating it to ourselves, we begin to see it take concrete form. Something which takes concrete form is never quite as frightening as something which we haven't acknowledged and which we can only imagine. The moment something takes that concrete form, then we begin to truly assess how difficult it's going to be to deal with, how destructive is it going to be if it happens to us and so on. So, take a deep breath, sit back, do some soul searching and in detail, carefully, articulate to yourself what it is you're actually worried about. It could be your personal health, it could be your personal finances, it could be your housing situation, it could be the health and safety of somebody you love or people you love, people around you. It could be any combination of these things. And on top of these, lumped together within the label of pandemic anxiety, we have things about the uncertainty of global weather, the uncertainty of global economies, the uncertainty of national economies, the job situation in specific countries, 
um, the sort of um, uh, immigration situation in specific countries and so on. Be detailed in how you express all these things. Don't narrow it down to just the pandemic. Acknowledge and understand what it is that is worrying you and spell it out for yourself. You will find that the moment you do this, because you release the cognitive effort that it took to suppress it, you will feel a certain sense of relief and according to neuroscience, you'll probably, probably be a couple of IQ points smarter as well. And smarter is what we need to be in order to survive in the current situation that we are in. So what's step number two? Step number two is adjust your expectations. Now, I know this is a very kind of paternalistic approach, a paternalistic kind of advice, top down where somebody tells you, adjust your expectations and get what you're given. And this is not what it's about at all. Our expectations tend to um, guide our reactions to the things we encounter when those things don't quite meet what we expected to happen. When that happens, we tend to be to feel sort of um, disheartened and inadequate and we tend to shut down in order to protect ourselves from the catastrophic sense of failure which we usually face. So by adjusting our expectations, by making them realistic within the context of our reality, we are better positioning ourselves to deal with something which hasn't quite worked out the way we expect it to. So when somebody says, you know, try and try and try and try again, essentially what they say is that every time you try, you adjust what you're doing because you're adjusting your expectations and you're learning all the time. If you were to try, for instance, you know, 100 goes in order to succeed, the first 99 have to be incremental steps of improvement. If you were comparing the first with the 100th, then the gap is so huge, you would feel inadequate, you would shut down, and you would never go through the 99 steps required to succeed. So this adjustment of expectations is simply a reflection of the reality we're in right now. And to put it into better context, we're still in a pandemic, it hasn't gone away, it's not magically going to disappear the moment the clock strikes midnight on December 31st. So essentially, we need to understand that all the things will be better, all the things will be different, <laughs> certainly. They are still going to be difficulties, and in order for us to face those difficulties, we must be mentally prepared for things which will be unexpected, which are going to appear um, as we get into 2022. So this is just an example. You know, you, you can make this fit in your particular situation. And the moment you do that, you will also begin to feel more confident in your own ability to deal with the unexpected. Essentially, a lot of the stuff which we face comes down to confidence. Confidence allows us to unlock inner cognitive and psychological resources. And if we think we can do something, then we're less likely to give up. We are less likely to take stupid risks. We're more likely to take those risks which will guide us towards the outcome we want. And that approach tends to give us the success that we seek. There are only two more steps in the process. Step number three is assess your current strategy. Look at what you're actually doing in your day-to-day -day life. Look at your own activities. Look at the things which you're engaged in in order to get through this, the now, the pressure which we feel, the anxiety which we experience. And consider how the things which you do are helping you or hindering you. Anything that helps you, you need to keep. Anything that you think hinders you, you need to just get rid of. So that's step number three. It's basically streamlining your activities. What's step number four? Step number four is focus on the positive. I know we're going through some bleak times right now, all of us, without question. At the same time, we have a lot to be thankful for. So focus on the things which you're thankful for. It might be your current state of health. It might be your current state of um, job prospects. It might be the place which you live. You might have a roof over your head which you don't have to worry about. You know, focus on something which is really positive. And if none of those things are actually happening for you, you can still feel positive in the fact that even by watching this video, even by thinking about these things in this way, you are taking steps which are guiding you positively towards a future which is still 
unexpected, still uh, ambiguous, still uncertain, but you have a better chance of controlling because you are preparing yourself for it. There are a lot of um, good things that happen to us psychologically and physically and mentally when we're being positive. And it is important always to try and find the positive in every situation and focus on that because this is how we build our own inner resources and this is how we become better at what we do. So these are the four steps. Going through them again, what are they? Well, acknowledge and articulate the problem which you're facing. Adjust your expectations. Assess your current strategy. Focus on the positive in your life. If you carry out these four steps, then you're in a much better situation to take advantage of 2022, even though the level of uncertainty in the year ahead, the level of ambiguity which we're likely to face, and the number of challenges is not going to go away. As usual, there are more links in the description box below. Please follow them. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I do appreciate every one of you. Do keep sending me messages either through Gmail or on Twitter. And my Twitter handle is at the end of this video. The messages which you send me, I do not usually respond to because they tend to be too many and there are only so many hours in a day and I do have to write <laughs> and make these videos. However, I do actually uh, read everyone and the video content is the direct response to those messages. Finally, focus on feeling as good as you can about yourself as you can and strive to be safe and happy out there. I appreciate you. Take care.